Hey Russell fam, in today's video, I'm going to tell you why my father's world isn't working for us. Be back in just a second. Hi, my name is Becky and welcome to our Russell's Loving Life YouTube channel. If you're new to our channel, I am a homeschooling mom of two and I have been homeschooling since 2012. Here on this channel, we talk about homeschooling, homemaking, and everything in between. If that sounds like something you are interested in and would like to see more videos, please consider subscribing and clicking that little bell notification down at the bottom. That just lets you know every time I upload a new video and it lets me know that y'all are liking this content that I am putting out. We also have a blog, which is russellslovinglife.com. There, I give you tips and tricks that I have learned through my years of homeschooling. And if you're a returning Russell fam, we are so glad you are back. Okay, today's video is gonna be why my father's world isn't working for us. Now, parts of it is working for us and parts of it is not. Now, my father's world was designed to where you could teach all of your kids at the same time specific specifically subjects like history, Bible, and science. Well, that just isn't working for us right now. There's five years between Bailey and Becca, and yes, Becca sits with us, but she's not really getting anything out of it. So like Bailey's curriculum, exploration to 1850, and pretty much most of their curriculums start second and third grade and go up. So if you have a second and third grader, and a sixth grader, then it, the perfect, the curriculum would work perfectly for you. But with Becca being in first, Bailey being in sixth, it's not really working for us. So I am having to use two completely different curriculums, which is fine. Um, it's still my father's world. I still love my father's world, the way that it is designed and the layout of it, but it's not working for us to do as a family. And as of right now, that's fine. As a homeschool mom, as a homeschool family, when you find out something is not working, you tweak it and you make it work and fit your family. And that is perfectly fine. So Bailey's using exploration to the 1850s and Becca is using learning God's story. And if you're interested in um, flip throughs, do a lesson with us, unboxings, I will list all of those up in the iCards. So look for those. But I will show you a clip here of how I'm getting each of their curriculums together.
typically what I do now is Becca will get up, she'll eat breakfast, Bailey will eat breakfast, and then Bailey will go reading or do some chores that he needs to do, and I'll do school with Becca. Well, since she's in first grade, it doesn't take that long. And then we come together, we do our Bible, and then Becca goes and reads and plays her Legos or something like that, just some busy things while I'm doing school with Bailey. And Bailey is becoming a more independent learner, so I can lay everything out, as you will see, and then just hand it to him, and he does it. And if he has questions, then I help him. But I'm trying to teach him to be more independent. So if I can get him to be more independent, then that will help me to where I can work one-on-one -on -one with Becca more, and it just kind of helps the flow go a little bit better. As homeschooling parents, we are always learning something new every day about homeschooling. And that's why we homeschool. And what works for me may not work for you. And what works for you may not work for me. And that is perfectly okay. When I first started homeschooling, I thought I had to do everything exactly like it was designed in the curriculum or do exactly like other homeschool families. And then I learned I didn't have to. And as soon as I learned that I did not have to, my stress went from up here to down here. So now I'm not near as stressed. Now, don't get me wrong. I have my good days and my bad days. Kids have their good days and their bad days. But just know that it's gotten better from when I first started. So I'm going to turn the camera around and I kind of want to show you what I mean when I'm talking about my father's world isn't working for us and how it would work if you had a um, second or third grader. Okay, here it is telling you ways to adapt for your second or third grader. Well, Becca's not a second or third grader. She's still in first grade, so it's kind of hard for me to adapt this to fit her. And if she's not learning or understanding I'm not going to make her sit there and go through it when she just went through her own science that she had over here with her learning God's story first grade curriculum because it does come with its own science. So there's a whole section right here in the teacher's manual on exploration to the 1850s, the teacher's manual, and it's telling you how to adapt for each of the histories. This, complete book of animals that's your science because you're talking about um, exploring creation with botany for the second half of the year but it's telling you how to adapt and there's lots of information in here but it's just not working um, it also has a section right here for if you're using this for a seventh or eighth grader how to adapt different things for the science and let me just go over here. I know I've done some flip through videos, but I want to show you. Okay, here we are on week 12. And it doesn't necessarily have days. It just has the order that you need to do them. Um, spelling, I use a different spelling. I use a different English, but here's the history that it tells you to use. It tells you this, here's your science. Math, I use um, Saxon, not uh, the math they suggest. And then if you have the deluxe version, which I don't have, is all of this. But I mean, we're doing a read aloud, just not reading this aloud. If you wanted to follow along, you could probably check this out at the library. But that's what a day looks like. And then you come over here, and then it tells you Monday. And this is what teacher's notes are. Sometimes it tells you things to read, things to do. Like it says, make a board game. And you can read ahead. Um, if you want to do this, you don't have to do these extra activities. Some children like to do them. Some children do not. Bailey's the type that doesn't like to sit still and do these type things. But um, we do some of them for fun. And then once you get to your science for your animals, Here's the questions you ask your beginners, which would be second and third graders. And then you get over here to, what did we learn? 
And so that's for your older ones. And that was all for Monday. And then we start with Tuesday. And then Wednesday, here's your beginner, what we learned. And then if you want to talk further about the animals. So um, I love my father's world. Don't get me wrong. I have used my father's world with Bailey since he was in kindergarten. Um, now we're up to exploration of the 1850s. If you look back at my teacher's manual from Becca's Learning God's Creation, there are um, all kinds of notes and things that he, Bailey did when he was in here. I've got paper clips of things already here. I did not know that I was going to have Becca at um, this point. So I just kind of kept everything together and stored it all away and then found out I was pregnant. And then so now it did come in handy to keep it all. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Um, I have, I'm not saying my father's world is a bad curriculum. So please do not think I am saying that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that it doesn't work for us to teach um, multiple grades at one time through their history and their science just because my kids are five years apart. I hope this video helps you to understand why my father's world isn't working for us in the way it was designed, but it does work for us the way I made it work. As always, remember to be kind, be careful, be considerate, and have a great day. Bye.